Next question. John says, hello, James and Dutch. I hope all is well with both of you. I think with me, is it we? Yes, yes. Good. What did Dutch think of WCW in the early 1990s? I heard Eric Bischoff in the Who Killed WCW series describe it as not even third tier back then. I asked because as a kid at the time, WCW was my introduction to the world of wrestling. I used to look forward to seeing it each Saturday afternoon on ITV. So, English boy. I thought it was British. I thought it was great. Maybe I am looking at it with nostalgia. So, in the 1990s WW run... Was it just that crappy to work the territory? Because we've talked about how many dates you had to work in 1990, 1991. We've talked about the Jim Hurd thing with you having to deal with him. But really, what was it just like working there as far as conditions, ticket sales, that kind of thing? Brutal. It really was. It was like a never-ending <clears throat> road trip is what it was. And you'd go to these... I mean, you were so busy traveling and checking into hotels and eating out and going to the building and putting your stuff on and going to the ring, coming back and taking a shower and driving to the next town, getting in the room, starting it all over again. So after a while, you just, you just completely burn out. And people wonder, why did those guys get on drugs? Why are they alcoholics? Well, hell, we had to damn do something. They were taking pills and they were they they were drinking to get through the day, to to get through the tour, and yeah, it was it was really physically exhausting because you had to go out there every night. I guess usually the same guy that you you'll wrestle all week long, and so it kills your creativity as well in that sense. Well, yeah, because they 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 wouldn't change anything up. <clears throat> if you started a tour with a guy. Say I started the tour and I'm working Brad Armstrong. Well, the tour would continue at least five days. So I had him five days. Then you go to TV for two days or whatever it was. And then you're back on the road. So, but you do get your match down with Brad Armstrong pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then they wouldn't even put you on TV. So you already got the match worked out and they, they wouldn't even put you on TV. Yeah, it was, it was an exhausting, uh, uh, ordeal. Let me just say that. And not fun either. Was there any like communication with the office? I mean, who would you go and talk to to talk nobody. to some higher? Just you just no, nobody. these nobody. are your dates. Good riddance. Well, you could call uh, Jim Hurd, but he'd say, What are you doing calling me? Why don't you call somebody else or call this? And you had uh, road agents and they kind of just delivered what they wanted you to do. They wouldn't come up. I mean, if you go to TV, it's different. Now they want a certain thing done at a certain time. And the house shows, it didn't matter. So they say, ah, you know, same as usual. Go, go about 10, 12 minutes. And, you know, either I go over or he goes over. And that, then they walk. That's the last communication you have with anybody from the official office. It's left to you to work the match out. So you go out there and and you have to entertain yourself while you're in the ring. So we would do that, but it, it was it was wasn't easy. Did WCW at the time draw anywhere? Like I think it got even worse, like by ninety three to the point in ninety four they just cancelled all the house shows entirely. But I mean, like, how, no. how few people were you wrestling in front of at times? Oh, you go to a big say 5,000 seat arena. Uh, you, you might have a thousand people in there, 1,500. It mostly looked like we had an old saying in wrestling. You could fire off a shotgun in a place and not hit anybody. And, and sometimes we'd have the occasional good house, which was fun. So, but working Seven days a week without a day off, I mean, is, is not good for morale. It, it's really not. It wasn't good for mine. And he, was it center stage you were still working at at that time, WCW? D do TV, yes. Yeah. Center stage. Center stage. Yep, sure was. Was it as big a dump as I've heard it was? 
Well, it was on, I think it was on Peachtree. I think what it was, it used to be the old Atlanta Channel 17 Studios. It's what I think it used to be, and they've done some work, and and you had a, and, and they were doing game shows there, some stuff you would go out, and it was like, uh, they would have a, a middle part where they would put the ring, and then you would have seats on half the side of the building, you know, kind of going down bleacher style. And we would always, we would come out through the, <clears throat> through the curtain and the desk, I think sat on the right. And that's where your announcer was or the, the co-host and, and it was always well lit, but it was a, a small studio. And you maybe get 150 people in there, maybe. Did they have the boo and cheer signs up no. there? Or was that later on? No, later on. Okay, a couple more things briefly. Well, what do you a... think? They would always cheer me when I went out there. I mean, that goes without saying. Cheering your mullet. Uh, Amazing yeah, yeah. mullet in the early it, 90s. It, 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 it was. It really was. Uh, did you get any thrill? Well, apparently not, because it was just a rough time on the road all the time. But did you get any thrill like working with a lot of the younger guys? Because obviously there was a budget cuts like crazy at this time. They fired pretty much everyone who had an expensive contract. And then they brought in tons of young guys to work with, like your Johnny B. Bads and your, uh, I was going to say someone else said, but that'll come up quite soon. But did you enjoy working any of the young guys? You know, were you a teacher of sorts at this point or were you just trying to like survive? I didn't give a fuck if they learned it or not. I mean, I would help them. I wouldn't try to, but hey, I was trying to survive myself. <laughs> I was afraid of getting hurt is what I was afraid of. Because if we get hurt, I don't know if they would have paid me or not. So, and and the guys, you know, they were, some of them greener than grass. I mean, they could do the basics, and that was it. And they had no, they had no sense of timing. No sense of when to start to come back, when to end to come back, when to miss, when to do this. And basically what they were doing, they, they were learning on the job, OJT, on, on, OTJ, on the job. Yeah, learning on the job. So, and I hope they learned because, you know, I wasn't trying to teach. It was just whatever was out there, you know, if you learned it, you learned it. If you want to ask me a question, I'll tell you. But as far as me going out of the way to help them, no, I wasn't that. I wasn't that uh, gracious. 